in the early years of 2020, um, of 20, uh, two, 2003, when I was at the university, there is this, a city in my country, um, if you're not from Cameroon, that city is called Mutengene. So I was at university at a small city, which is not far from Mutengene, and I went over to Mutengene to visit my grandfather. And when I met my grandfather, he gave me um, some money. He gave me 2,000 francs to uh, use as transportation back to Boya. And um, I took the money and I put it in my pocket and I went down towards Boya Road, which um, towards a patrol station around Boya Road and someone greeted me on my hand. The person greeted me on my hand and then um, I looked at him. I didn't figure him out because he just sent his hand and he said, hey, hi. How? How are you doing? I'm like, um, okay, I'm fine. I sent my hand and I greeted this person. And he looked at me and I looked at him and he was like, um, don't you remember me? I'm like, no, I don't remember you. Then he was like, are you not the guy who came to bury your, who came to bury one of your persons at the cemetery last week in the night? I was like, oh, um, this is a weird story. I'm like, no, I'm not the one. I don't, I don't know you. And he's like, oh, you don't know me. Oh, okay, sorry. Then I'm going. He scratches my palm a little bit like this. He scratches my palm. Mm. Then it tickles in my head. This is all weird. Someone who comes over and then he scratches my palm and then he he's leaving and he spoke about me going to the cemetery to bury someone. I'm like, oh, this sounds very weird. Then immediately some other person comes out um, from nowhere and says, hey, did that guy greet you? Did, did, did he say hi to you? I'm like, yeah, and he scratched my hand. And, he, and this other person tells me, Oh, yeah, this guy too greeted me and he scratched my hand and I'm, I'm feeling pains and I'm right now I'm feeling pains on my arm. I'm an African and so we, we grew up definitely in, uh, in a society where we believe in, in, in witchcraft. And so immediately that cultural aspect of, of where I grew up came up to me and I'm like, oh, uh, I start and then I started feeling like my arm too was kind of feeling, was dying. Then I look, I say, oh, yeah, he greeted me, and I'm, I think I'm feeling my arm too dying. It's all psychological. So we turn to say, but where is he? Then I turned around, and we notice this guy tells me, oh, that's the guy over there. He's going over there. So we cross the road, follow him. He was going to the patrol station. And at the patrol station, I met the guy. As we, I'm coming towards the guy, we saw him. He was babbling. He was mumbling some some incantations, like he was doing some things like incantations, then he was praying and uh, doing some kind of things. That's what I saw. And then he, he said, then he turned around all of a sudden and he looks at, hey, what are you guys doing here? That's in Pigeon, of course. I'm, I'm sure that lots of the people who watch me uh, would, might not understand this. And so he turns and says, what are you doing here? And I'm like, this, this guy with me says, um, Malam, you greeted me and now my arm is paining. And the guy says, and me, me, you, what are you doing here? And then I look the same way, very perplexed. And I'm like, oh, um, yes, you greeted me too. And then he says, oh, so I greeted both of you. Okay, come. We come together. Then he says, um, so I'm happy you guys have come on your own. I didn't call you. And he says, so if you had gone to where you were going to, if you had gone up back to the university, and because he could figure out that I was a university student, he says, if you had gone back up to the university and you, on going up back to Boya, you had an accident in the car, would that have been great? I'm like, um, no, it would not be great. He says, okay, so um, I'm going to take off the curse which I put on you guys. I would understand that. Oh, come on, Google. He says, I'm going to take off the curse which I put on you guys. So what is going? To, what you're going to do is take off your purse. Take off your purse. He puts the bead on his hand and then he says, hit your purse here twice. And then I'm like, oh, okay. You just only greeted me. Now I'm scared. Now, um, and I'm coming here. You haven't yet had the chance to get me initiated with anything. And you're telling me to hit my purse on your beads. I look, I'm a little bit skeptical, but this guy who is by me, he says, oh, yes, he takes out his purse very fast. He hits it three times on, on, on the beads. And then, you know, he hits it three times on the beads. Then he... He, he takes back his purse. Then I look at it. Then I take up my purse. I say in my head, oh, if I hit my beads on the, my purse on this guy's beads, is he not going to put witchcraft there, which is going to, you know, enslave me? And then I say, well, whatever. I'll hit the purse there and then I would not take the purse anymore. So I hit the purse three times on the beads. I hit the purse one, two, three. Then he holds the purse. He says, how much is in the purse? I said, um, 2,000 francs. 
And then he said, is that all the money you have on you? And I'm like, yes, that's all the money I have on me. I actually had 50 francs somewhere in my baggy jeans. I knew I had 50 francs. So I tell him, yes, I have just 2,000 francs. Then I'm waiting to see if he's going to figure out about the 50 francs in my pocket. He doesn't figure out about the 50 francs. I'm still very scared. Then I sit quietly. Then the next level, my purse is still in his arm, in his hand. Then the next time, the next thing he says, if you go to where you're going to and you... You, you, you take your phone and you put it in your, on your ear and then your ear blocks. Would it be good? And I'm like, um, no. I'm very young at that time. First year university, very young. So he says, so take your phone and hit it on my hand three times. My dad had just bought me this Alcatel phone. Phones were very rare at the time. My small, nice Alcatel. And I'm like, huh. I'm not going to put this phone on this man's hand because if I put this phone on this man's hand, he hasn't yet touched my phone. It's instead now me hitting it on this his beat that is going to block my ear. So I'm a little bit scared and I'm skeptical to not hit my 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 phone on his beats. These black beats, black kind of you know religious beats. So he he says hit your phone. So I'm still very reticent and I'm looking and I'm waiting for this other guy who has been the one who is pushing me to you know hit my phone on this man's black beats. I'm waiting for him to hit. It looks like he didn't have a phone because phones were very very um rare at that time so he's waiting and waiting and i'm skeptical and skeptical so as, as i'm it's still being skeptical and nothing is happening another third person comes in very fast he's supposed to be the brother of this guy who is with me where someone is trying to or someone is doing some witchcraft around us like that's what i know is witchcraft and so this brother comes in and this brother says um what are you doing here since papa sent us to go to kumba kumba is another city in 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 the same region since papa sent us to go to kumba to go and buy cocoa what are you doing here where is the money for the cocoa he says oh the money for the cocoa he's, he's doing like he's shaking he says oh the money for the cocoa is right here is right here with me he doesn't show anything so and what are you still doing here oh no i met this malam this malam told me to greet him and i greeted him and and my hand now is painting so what does he want you to do that's what the brother says and the brother says um, he, he wants you to he wants me to hit my he wants me to hit my 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 purse he wants me to hit my phone on his hand he wants me to hit my phone on his beat and then the brother says this is what the brother says and all this while i'm still very perplexed in a in a state of trance very frightened and the brother says that um then hit the damn fucking phone and let's go hit the damn phone and let's go oh now this at this very juncture gets to an irrational point in humanity then i start beginning to ask myself if i'm dreaming or if i'm real in a real world because naturally when i'm dreaming i get to find things very weird and i get to know i'm dreaming because if i start flying or if i start doing things i know oh i'm in a dream like this is not real because in the real world when you meet your brother in danger you are going to try to free him that is the basic reflex in humans when you meet your brother somewhere almost dying or there's something wrong you get frightened yourself and you're like why do you want him to hit his phone on your beads on your witchcraft beads but this brother doesn't ask his brother why are you trying to hit your phone on your witchcraft beads so this this now goes against every rule i know as human being where when someone is in danger you don't just react the way this brother did so at that same moment this is what i said to myself i said if this is a dream or if i'm in a dream world then i'm going to act rational and what i did simply with all the fear i had in me i picked up my wallet from his hand i took it off his hand and i turned my back without saying a word and I moved back towards the road. And on going towards the road, I saw a guy who was backing the road all this while. He was looking at the other direction. He turned to me and looked and said, um, where are you going to? Are they finished with you yet? Then I looked at him in all the scare still. And I'm like, um, I don't say anything. And I go beside there are women who are selling bread there at uh, uh, Mutengene Boya Road, just by the station. I tell them, oh, somebody took me behind there. He he told me, he greeted me. And then he said, symmetry. he said, I had met him at the cemetery and I got frightened. And he was, he was talking to me behind there. He told me to hit my purse, my wallet. And the women asked me, did he take anything from you? And I'm like, no, he didn't take anything. They laughed and they told me, don't, don't worry, excuse me. Don't worry, nothing is going to happen to you. But I still stayed in so much fear despite that. Even when I went up to Boya, I still stayed in fear. So it is this same thinking process, this same thought process that made me to understand 
that there was something behind the measures put around the COVID pandemic. When human beings are in danger, the solution you propose to them, they are bound to follow. The easiest way to make humans do something is to make them fear death. And during, at the beginning of this pandemic, everyone, no one understood what this pandemic was all about. And then the Professor Raoul of France proposes hydroxychloroquine, which is medication which you and I have consumed for over 50 years. It's one of the safest medications we have ever consumed in our lives, hydroxychloroquine. And when Professor Didier Raoult proposed this hydroxychloroquine, the first thing the World Health Organization did, the first thing the media started doing immediately was to say, it is fake, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. This goes against human nature. When you are in danger, the least of anything the least solution someone gives you you will take it but the fight the energy they put in to fight hydroxychloroquine which was proposed as a solution that made me to start doing research and i started doing research and research and research and in april 2020 i was able to predict that the intention is to inject everyone and they are going to use the military. They are going to use the military to inject everyone. The intention is everyone. They have been going towards a gradual behavioral change process. They have been changing. They tell you today, kids are safe. They get you in. And then they continue next. Then they get kids in. It is the same technique scammers use. When you don't wet, you don't wet. They get you in to put your, your leg in. When your leg is in, you don't turn back. Because the intention is to inject everyone. Now, I'm not part of those who are saying the injections are to kill people. No. It is a behavioral change process. They are trying. They are priming you to accepting something in the long run. If you accept that you who is living every day, you are seeing all of your neighbors who have still lived. You are seeing all of your colleagues. There are no vacancies at your office, but someone is telling you that there is a hectic pandemic and everyone is dying and you are listening to the media agenda setting. Then there is a problem because reality is not in the media. Reality is right by you. It is what you see. It is not what you hear. Death has always existed. Death is the easiest thing you can use to frighten human beings. Fear. So they are using what you have always known. Death. And they're making death. They have personified death. And it's now called COVID. So death, which has always existed, you have forgotten that death has always been something you have lived with. You have forgotten that your neighbor you knew in 2020 is still right there. You have forgotten that you go to Mutengene Market or you go left and right and you don't wear any masks. But you are leaving for a pandemic for which it was predicted that over 700 or a billion Africans will die. And up till now, they are not dead, but they are imposing vaccines for you injections and nobody told you maybe you don't know but since march 2020 there has been a joint agreement as to censor anyone that says anything against COVID. facebook is already beginning to censor me i am already a point of interest Cent facebook is censoring me for all the social scientific analysis i've been making around this COVID all around so they in on march 2020 there is a joint agreement signed by the seven tech giants online to censor everything that is against what the who is saying they have censored the best scientists in the world the best person the person who created the inventor of the mrna technology himself the creator of uh, 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 of the, the PCR tests, the best epidemiologist, the best vaccinologist, they have been censored since March 2020. The joint agreement is out there. Now, we are not fools. We are not stupid. They don't need to censor other experts in order for reality to exist. When you censor people, then you are trying to kill the truth.
Now, why most people don't get to understand why we have a problem or why there is a problem with this censorship is that people don't understand the end point why they are trying to inject everyone. Now, let me explain. This is very important. Let me explain. This is not rocket science. This is not gospel truth, but this is critical thinking. I have the right as a strategist or as a chess player to think beyond. If on my chess board, I can think that if I push and attack your queen, you are bound to move your queen. It is because I can predict those moves. Those are factual moves. So now let's let me go on this hypothesis. Why could they be trying to vaccinate or to inject the entire world? Now, this is the point. I want to ask you one question before I go ahead with that. How do you think this vaccination, this injections you are accepting, how do you think they are going to track vaccinated and unvaccinated people? Do you think that they are going to use your phones? Do you think they are going to depend on the barcodes they are telling you they want to use on your phones? Do you think they are going to accept a piece of paper as a vaccine proof when we know that we can fake those passports, those vaccine proof in Kumba? Do you think that they don't know that there are fake vaccine passports and fake vaccines that we are all doing that? People are doing that all around the globe, in the airports, left and right, even in Cameroon to travel. Do you think they don't know that? They know that. But what they are focused on right now is to get your, your foot in, is to get you to accept this first process. The first process is accepting that there is a pandemic, is accepting that there is a necessity for you to get injected. That's the first part. When you accept it, whatever process comes on after, you will accept it. What is the aim for the injection? Like I said, it's a behavioral change process, a priming process. You are being primed for another level. The intention, this is how, how it sounded nice to those who created the project and sold it to some of the other governments that are in connivance with it. It is to create a safer world. The aim is to create a safer world. How do you create a safer world? You remember that 9-11, for example, there was an attack on the USA. And on that attack, those planes came and then they exploded the Twin Towers and so many things. If people were being really tracked, if people could be tracked in real time, they would have been able to, to anticipate this attack. If, for example, you are trying to fight climate change deforestation, and you say that you want to fight deforestation when you can't even account for the number of trees that exist or the number of people that exist in a community or you don't know who is going into the forest to cut down the forest, where and how, and you cannot stop them in real time, you cannot say that you are combating climate change. Now, climate change is one of the biggest priorities. The biggest fights of the, the, the whole globe is supposed to fight climate change. Now, if you are saying you're fighting climate change, then you propose a solution to climate change, which, which is being able to track in real time people. Many people tell me, oh, you are being tracked by your phones and all. No, you are being tracked by your phone. Yes, because that's it. But GSM data shows that less than 70% of the world use phones. So this is an unreliable tracking method because I can decide to stop using this phone and I can go away. It means your tracking is going to end. Whereas this world, this safer world they are trying to create is supposed to be able to track everyone in real time. And in order to track everyone in real time, you need to get your tracker in them. But if you had to get this tracker into people, you would have skeptics. You would have Christians who would wake up and they would remember, oh, in Revelations, we were told that the mark of the beast is going to be put on us. So you make, you are going to get a big fat resistance from the beginning if they went straight to want to track people. So what are they using? It is a behavioral st uh, change strategy. You use what people are used to, to condition them with, and it is your health. It is your health. The first step is going to inject you, of course, with, I, I'm not saying that the injections are dangerous. No, no, no. That's not what I said. They are not dangerous. If people are dying, they are just the collateral damages. They are the same things that happen. This is not yet the part where anybody is dying or where Bill Gates' population agenda is coming on. No. And please, nobody say this is conspiracy theory. Go and read. So this is not the part. What is happening now? It's just simple. You get this injection, 
they are going to give you a booster shot. It's a well-designed strategy. There are variants, which means that you will not be take you will not take one. It will never end. It will end only when you get to the end point, which is you are going to be tracked. It is to end at the tracking because the next level of this strategy after you're injected all oh, the variants all oh, the unvaccinated the vaccinated oh now there's there's a new variant that has come out because the unvaccinated don't want to get back how on earth do they even start telling you that there is a vaccine and then they start telling you that i need to take a vaccine for yours to work does it even make sense if i told you three years ago that there will be a medication that someone needs to drink for yours to work you would say that is insanity when i told my wife in march 2020 i sat with my wife and another older brother i respect so much and i told them they are going to inject you they are going to forcefully inject you they're going to use the military to inject you and they told me oh but when people want to travel they have to get injections i said this is not going to be about you traveling it will be you having access to the shop it will be you having access to school having access to basic necessities that is how far this is going and our african leaders do understand what's happening but their hands are tied those had a, that have tried john magufuli of tanzania they have been assassinated uh pian kuruziza of of, of pian kuruziza assassinated assassination attempt on the president of madagascar assassination on the president of haiti those were all people who fought against the covid vaccines get off from mainstream media and start doing research get off from mainstream and start doing research i have discovered why i'm doing this 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 live today is because i have i have theoretically analyzed this over and over and i explained it with mass communication theories on how the media is setting the agenda on you how it's using hypodemic needle right into your brains how it's putting you into the spiral of silence this is what they have been doing to you words like conspiracy theories is aimed at putting you in the spiral of silence the spiral of silence is a political science theory that says people always want to belong so if you if you if you make them feel like if 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 they feel like if they say something you would reject them from a group they will not say it so they have created the word conspiracy theories to create a spiral of silence so that you sit quiet instead of saying what you're seeing you sit quiet so they are creating that spiral of silence and it's a spiral of silence that makes everyone feel like everyone is okay with it they do the same thing with the war in the northwest and the southwest region they use threats on on citizens so citizens can't express themselves i mean the northwest and the southwest regions of cameroon so citizens can't express themselves and when citizens can't express themselves those in the francophone region for example they think oh everything is going normal and you only have to start seeing until the boys start using phones to demonstrate how much they kill soldiers before people actually understand what's going on on the field so they have put people in the spiral of silence because in my groups when i speak with other people who are military oh no don't speak you know that in this nation if you speak you will be arrested now that's putting people in the spiral of silence and it's the same strategy that's being used around covid people who think critically are called conspiracy theorists there is no rationale as to how they would tell you yesterday that children are safe tomorrow children are not safe there is no rationale to that there is no rationale to i should take an injection for your own injection to work whereas there is hydroxychloroquine whereas there is ivermectin now ivermectin is the medication that has been used for river blindness from time immemorial for over 30 years it is on the center for disease control website ivermectin it won the nobel prize for in science because it was a medication that saved lots of people but today my friends who are Doctors who are listening to mainstream, matter of fact, who, if you're a doctor, you're not even doing research. You're just a parroter. You're just an implementer. They're they are calling ivermectin a horse dewormer. They say, oh, that medication which is used to, to, to deworm horses. Ivermectin is a Nobel Prize winning medication. It, it's been used in India. It was banned by the chief scientists of the World Health Organization and the Indians rioted. Yeah, I need some water. Thank you. So as I was saying, 
ivermectin, a safe medication. So when you combat in the in times of a pandemic, as you call it, a pandemic which you and I get off from the media, we know that our neighbor we saw yesterday is still there. We go to the markets, we live in the markets, and nothing is happening. Yes, COVID exists. COVID-19 exists, but it is not a pandemic. Worst of all, it's not a pandemic in Africa. But there is a global intention to inject everyone, not to kill them, but to get you into the first process because they will tell you that there are new variants coming and some people are unvaccinated and there are people who are using fake vaccine passports. So what other means can we use? I want you to reflect yourself. Mm? Let's reflect. What other means do you think if people are faking the vaccine passports, they are fake ones as usual, if people are faking, if people, some people, I have the right to not use a phone. So if you're using, if you want my phone as proof of vaccination, I'll tell you I don't use a phone. If I don't want the vaccine, I'll say, oh, I don't use phones. So what will you do? How do you think that an economy like the United States of America is going to run? Do you think people will need to get into 1,000 places? They will be showing papers at the door. Uh, vaccine passport? No. It needs to be digitally tracked. Digitally done. You have to pass through the tracker. For example, the metal detector. You have to carry the tracker on you. It is going to be something which is not transferable. If they want to distract you, it's behavioral change strategies. They will go gradually. There is, there is the anecdote, sorry for me to digress. There is an anecdote where a guy is around with, with a girl and he says, oh, please, just let me put only the cap. Only the cap, let me put just the cap. You, you know that if you let the cap in, the whole body gets inside. Once you let the beginning, the first part, you accept it. So, of course, there will be diehard people who will never accept it. Of course, the next strategy is there. Worst come the worst, eliminated. Next level, they will put you against me. It is vac it's going to be a wor wor world of vaccinated against vaccinated. They are putting you in fear because you begin to say, "Why are you not taking your vaccine to protect me? Are you are you are you are you okay? Why am I not taking my vaccine to protect you? Why did you take it? There is medication. Why did you take it? You take it and you tell me, hey, hey, take yours to protect me. You, you, you people are wicked. How did they get you to that level?" of lobotomization i should take mine to protect you my med i should take my injection to protect you so they should just come we should have one sociopath for example i i don't want to even call uh adolf hitler because we need to really research on what really happened around him they should take somebody who has his evil intentions and that person should come and have an idea and then just force it on you no take your injection now take your, take yours and be happy take your injection what has my injection got to do you take yours so it is clear that from the strategy laid out they will tell you soon that there are so many fake vaccine passports there are fake vaccine passports there are so many variants that are coming up and so and so and so and so they need to create a, a more reliable system tracking system it needs to be created. Paper passport cannot work in a developed nation. It cannot work in the USA. There's no time. People go, there are 1,000 people passing at the same place at the same time. It needs to be digital. Even in the USA, when you're pulled over and you're asked for, for, for license and registration number, it is few people because they have seen something wrong. They don't have enough police to ensure license and registration in a country like the United States of America. So there needs to be an automatic tracking system. You need to be able to move and something detects immediately that you are vaccinated or not. And it's not going to be on your face. It will not be a piece of paper. If it's a piece of paper, I will, another person will take another person's piece of paper. So it won't be a piece of paper. It's going to be a digital tracking system on you. It might be through nanotechnology, which will... I'm not saying that's what has been done now, eh? Because people, most people are fighting to, to say, oh, you, I've taken a vaccine, there's nothing yet. No, it is a process. It is coming. It is coming. My prediction in 2020 was that the developed nations are going to use gradual political strategies first to convince people. But the strategy in the developing nations is going to be at baculum power the first thing they need to do in all the developing nations that will be the strategy especially for french colonies they will start with their police forces 
when it's on road in France, it will be on road in, on the African soil. They will start with the police forces and the police forces will start forcing the people. We all have been little slaves to this system. So let's leave this thing because people will be, oh, nobody will force me. They will force you. Just as Frank Bia will be president of Cameroon, they will force you. They will force you. You will do nothing. They have been forcing you and you have done nothing. There has been a war going on, for example, in Cameroon for over and over. The citizens haven't risen up to ask the government to dialogue. So you will do nothing. It's going to be at baculum on the African population. It's going to be power. It's going to be force. So you'll be forced to this, for this vaccine. Force, force, force. Variants are going to arise. Unending variants. It's a well-designed virus or a well-designed bioweapon. I don't know if most of you do follow up what's happening, the origin of the virus, the questions that have been going on at the, at, at the, at the U.S. Senate, Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul, asking questions to, to, to the director of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Dr. Fauci. All of those things have been going on. And mainstream is not focusing on that. And we think that it is what media is telling us that is the reality. No. Media is just simply priming you media belongs to one person media it belongs to one person it comes from the top when we mean one person eh? it means that the source of money for the media comes from advertisers it comes from other businesses those businesses are owned by other people right down right down right down right down right down for example gates owns shares in all the vaccine companies he owns shares in all the vaccine companies, for example. He owns someone that owns shares, for example, in Coca-Cola. He owns, he owns. It is a small, if you go from the bottom right up to the top, you find it that it is coming from one source. So, through, because of this, it is one source that sets the agenda that goes right down to all the other media. Of course, you have other um, uh, leftist media like myself i'm leftist you have some other leftists you have some other media which are still against but it is from one source so it means that if you refuse to adhere just as our presidents are forced they will mess them up they will assassinate you or they will bring things out of your closet and destroy you if they can't destroy you they will assassinate you so it is a one pyramidal system one system of power and control they will control you through your food if you don't toe the line they will cut off your food if you don't toe the line they will they will, they will blackmail so it's important for us africans because now what's my problem matter of fact that's it as an african what's my issue if this vaccine if these injections because they are experimental vaccinations if these injections are not mortal they are not lethal. Why am I worried about? Same predictions which I predicted. It's going to create a system which we Africans will not be able to control. Do you know what happened recently to the president of uh, the vice president of uh, Equatorial Guinea? His assets that were seized a long time ago by the United States of America worth over twenty-six million dollars. They wrote a very nice article today on BBC. This money will be they, will be they will use it to buy vaccines for his people. Did they ask for a vaccine? They are imposing what they will do with the money of the people of Equatorial Guinea. Say they will give them vaccines. Say they will give them vaccines. Our African money, you took money from my leader, you said he was embezzling it. Thank God he was embezzling it. That's fine. You took the money and you're now deciding. Do you think that as they have, they have defined COVID-19 as a world pandemic, do you think you'll ever get free? Do you think your, your countries can ever decide on anything anymore? Do you think if we get to the negotiation on climate change, benefit sharing, saying that, oh, I pollute less, so the Western world has to pay more money, which is what's going on. Most of you who know about climate change, there is a necessity for the Western world to pay us as less polluters. Do you think if they are giving you your health, your vaccine, do you think you can negotiate with anybody who is giving you your health? Don't you see that this is taking power away from you, putting you at a bigger, bigger, at, the, at the bigger end? All of the leaders who are seated and looking short term, do you think it's going to strike just the poor people? It will strike you when you are supposed to be tracked. All the little embezzlements that you could do, your small, small, conny, conny, no. 
everything gradually is going to get onto that tracking system. Your financial details, your whatever, everything is going to be there. And I look at everybody who is still getting onto crypto and I'm looking at the crypto thing. You don't even have internet. Gaddafi tried to make us control internet. Internet is the basis for the crypto. If you cannot even have your own internet on your own, you don't have a satellite and you're depending, your whole system depends on what? Internet? The day that you don't comply, they shut you down to Stone Age by shutting down your internet, just as they shut it in the Southwest and the Northwest region. You're getting into a system which you don't have control of the foundation. We don't, Africa doesn't have control of the foundations. And every day we are being told that, oh, we are getting into the digital era. Watchful eyes. And today they're trying to embed us into a system where we would always be followers. A system where we will forever be followers. That's what we are, Africans. Africa, just when I was thinking, and this is how I was even able to identify all this, because I believe that Africa needs to define its own economic model. But you cannot define an economic model when you are embedded in a globalist system of tracking. You can't. You will always be a follower. When they say development, our development, our development is just what the other person was doing 30 years ago. Say Africa is on the road of development. When they will be flying, at that time we'll be making Ferraris. When they'll be traveling to the moon, at that time it will just be easy. We think we're developing. We are in a system which is a suivism, a follower system. That's what we are. So there is a necessity for Africa to define its own system, um, an economic model which is good for Africa. And we cannot define that model if we only sit and we follow. We don't need injections. We have Dr. Fru, we have Dr. Dewa. We have it. If someone feels like they need the Western medication, they should get it. But it's going to be imposed on you and I. Now, this is, Ivo, you're telling me you can say all what you're saying because you don't fall sick, my brother. That is a joke. They, that is a joke. You tell me I don't fall sick. That's why I'm saying all this. Nah. Nah, my brother Ivo. That's not the situation. All they have been using on you is fear from the beginning till now. When anyone is censoring any expert opinion, you know, they call it disinformation. Now they tell you I'm giving disinformation. I am critically thinking from cause and effect. I am working on causality. This is what happened. This is what happened. When you censor the best scientists, when I censor, for example, uh, uh, Koge Henry, who is a professor in education because he says that, well, kids, um, the pedagogy of kids, you need to, to, to let kids be in a particular situation. I censor him. I say he's disinforming people. Whereas he is the best in the subject matter, then there is a problem. Then there is an agenda which I am trying to promote. And why am I trying to promote that agenda? Do we truly believe that someone loves us more than we do ourselves? Do we Africans think that someone loves us more than we do? No, they don't love us. People will leech to you as long as your existence only helps them. It only helps them acquire or achieve what they're looking forward to. I don't know if most of you have even watched, remotely watched the clip where Bill Gates talks about depopulation. It's right there. He said it in 2010. If we work very, if we work hard on uh, reproductive health and vaccines, we will be able to reduce this population by 15%. You work on reproductive health and vaccines to reduce population. And now this guy is a shareholder in all the vaccine companies. And he and, uh, and, and George Soros, I am not making up. It is right there. Anybody write to me and I'll give you the link. They are trying to buy. They were try That was in, Ju in June, July. They were trying to buy the company that makes the PCR tests. It means they are, they are determining who is sick, who is not sick. Our governments just sit there. Oh, all of your country, the people are very sick. We have to give them medication. We are seizing your 26 billion and we have to give you medicine. So there's nothing else you can do. So if they need your, all of your trees, if they need your whole trees in your forest, you will give them because they, 
you, you don't have any saying that give you medication. They just seized, they just took Obiangema's money. They want the seize and they said they are going to give them vaccines for the money. Did they ask for it? It is African money. It is African money. We cannot sit down and we're falling gullible to this thing when we see before our eyes, Ivo, uh, Ivo, you, you, you just told me now that I'm saying this because I don't fall sick. If this was a pandemic, as they say, and the fear they are pushing out, then you should have at least one person dead on your street at every home. But people have been dying as usual. People have been dying just as usual. Open your eyes, brothers and sisters. Don't stick into the media. That's not where shut down your media and you are going to live a normal life. And you would just go to sleep for one month and wake up and just start moving, moving. You see, but what is happening? And then it's the, from the radio you hear, oh, there have been 2,000 deaths. Where are the 2,000 deaths? Where are they buried? Where are they buried? Bearing grab on Mutenge, they don't flop. Where are they buried? And if you follow up the information, doctors were coerced. Doctors were paid. I wrote an article called How to Create an Elephant Pandemic Using the Two-Step Flow. It is simple. To create this pandemic, this is what they did. When the pandemic, let me explain it shortly. When, the, when, when they said there was a pandemic, what they did to Africa, the first thing they did, they gave billions of billions of dollars to our African governments and told them, fight the pandemic. This is a bait, a trap. When you give two billion and tell somebody to fight something that doesn't exist, they will create it just to defend using that money. The two-step flow. They gave billions to our government. They bought them big fat cars, those from Cameroon. Have you forgotten? In the beginning of the pandemic, they bought big fat cars for your government officials to fight COVID. So when you give if you give me now 10 billion and tell me to go and fight the elephants that are ravaging aqua if i get into aqua and there's no elephant i will create numbers for you oh yes um we have done this we we we, we have we are, we are fighting the elephants we have bought this and we, we we are going to overpower this and i call for a few media give them money tell them and then i tell them that um well anybody who is saying there's no elephant in aqua is a disinformer he's a conspiracy theorist anyone that says that there's no elephant in aqua this is money I'll be telling you people, I'll be giving you people data on how the numbers of the elephants are going every day. And you have the bloggers who are there every day. They're sitting down, they're writing, oh, there are 2,000 2, elephants today, this, that, that. And the people in Aqua sit and they're like, oh boy, but there's no elephants in Aqua. Then, oh, conspiracy theorists. Then you create the spiral of silence by doing what? Everybody is afraid now to be called a conspiracy theorist. Oh, he says that he's not seeing it. Are you not seeing? Are you not? There are 2,000 deaths. Where are the 2,000 deaths from the elephants? All right, guys. Thanks for having been there. I'm waiting for this to be shut down. I don't know. The many people that are going to be pissed by this. It's taken me quite some time to do this. But I think it's necessary for me to do it because Africa is about to get into an enslavement which we will not be able to get out from. It is an enslavement system. It is a system of dependence they are trying to create. There are so many things I could discuss about, so many things that happen to us as Africans and we don't ask questions like, but how did this come about? For example, why is it that it is only black people that have sickle cell? Do you know that that's it? Only black people, sickle cell exists only amongst them. Well, let me tell you something. If I had enslaved the people for over 400 years, if I had broken their bones, if I had maimed them, used double ganjas on them, pulled out their knots, beaten them and raped their wives and killed their kids and cut their necks, if I had treated the people like this, I would know that these people might raise up one day and fight me. So I will continuously try to subdue these people. And I would use the people against themselves. Because one day, those people, those Kunta Quintes who remember what happened, would rise up. 
But if you try to control their population, if you try to inject them with things which would, of course, give the sickle cell, which exists only in the black people, did you know that? If you inject them, then over a century, you would have that population down. You, you have weak kids, weaklings, who, if they want to rise up, you might take them down. The world is not a kind place, but we think that people love us so much. My next life is going to be on, on what's next to be done. It's going to be on agriculture, on the necessity to keep your seeds. Because for over, for the last over 20 years, oh, let me just tell you, the seeds that the corn that you used to plant doesn't exist anymore. It's only genetically modified food that we have now. And they don't grow. So it means that somebody needs to give you seed. Because if to control people, you need to control their food, their health. So... The food strategy has been going on for a very long time. The health, already they're getting the health. So for over 20 years, they've been giving you genetically modified seeds. So if you go and you try to plant those seeds after it has grown, it will not grow. So after some time, you start begging for seeds to plant on your farm. That's control. It's been going on for a very long time. And Africa, we're shutting our eyes. Our scientists, they're just seated quiet. No long-term vision. No... Pan-Africanism. There is no love for the continent. They're trying to control your food, your health. And they can control your food and your health because that's all you need in this world. The Ferrari is a distraction. The big house is a distraction. What you need is food, health, shelter, clothing, basically food. Because health, food, same thing. They're trying to control it. And when they control it, they control you. Right now, you don't know. We don't know that we are free people because we still have our farms, our lands. We can plant what we want to plant and eat. We don't know that. We are free. And someone needs to tell us that we are free because we have our lands. We have food. And they're trying to take our food from us. They're trying to take our health into their hands. We call Dr. Dewa Pakoti. We call Dr. Fru Pakoti. Those are the people. That's the kind of medication. It should be accepted. That's the medication our forefathers used. And we are seated here today as strong people. We cannot let down our own traditions this way. We are only going to be swallowed into a system we can't control. So um, thanks, thanks uh, those who, who have been watching. Uh, Seme, uh, Prof, Professor Koge. Thanks everyone who was right here. I just did this impromptu. Um, I really hope that this, this video, um, this really goes to lots of people and so many people do share it because as Africans, we have to rise up. We have to say no. If you want COVID to end, shut your TV, shut down the media, wake up after two weeks and you, you say, but what happened? But um, mommy, mommy, mommy Popoff is still there. Uh, uh, Papa Soya is still there. But you guys said there was a pandemic. Why are they not dead? That's what you will notice. Just peace, Africa.